welcome back to the Run to Remember Memorial Marathon podcast. I'm your host, Kristen Fairs, joined alongside race director, Carrie Watkins. We have another great lineup of guests for you this week. We check in with Dr. James Creasy, who's a runner on the Forensic Science Institute's relay team, the Memorial Marathon's medical director, OU physician, Dr. Brian Coleman, has some great tips to keep you training safely, and Carrie Coleman Norris, who leads our team of volunteers has some convincing ideas why you should volunteer, even if you're a runner. The 2024 Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon takes place the weekend of April 26th through the 28th. Visit okcmarathon.com to sign up to run or volunteer. Carrie. Here we are again. Here we are again. Have fun, what a a great lineup. And um, we're back to the News 9 studios, downtown Oklahoma City. Run comes right by here, race morning. Um, we've had a question about where's the marathon app. Unfortunately, another year, another app. So we're going to ask you to download another app in a couple of weeks. Um, what we realized last year is when you were tracking a runner, you had to go in and out of the yes. app, which we hated. Uh-huh. I personally was tracking my own daughter and I thought I was going to lose my mind. So, uh, we, we were fixing that. And, uh, it's amazing what happens when you put a runner on the, on the streets and you're actually doing what everybody else is doing. You learn a lot. And right. so we're fixing that, uh, and, That'll be out in the next couple of weeks. And I think what a fun lineup today. Uh, yes, I'm got excited. Two doctors in the house and uh-huh. uh, a brother and a sister, and it's going to be fun. But uh, happy to have Dr. Creasy with us. Yes. And, um, yep. So, Dr. James Creasy is the assistant director of Forensic Science Institute and a biology professor at the University of Central Oklahoma. Thank you for joining us today. Thank You're you for also me. a runner on the relay team. Yes, I am. Okay. And this, this, Great Institute helps us do an incredible program at the memorial. Uh, Caitlin Porterfield, Dr. Caitlin Porterfield is their captain, I think, right? She's your yes, cap- team she captain. Is, yeah. she, and uh, she sends you to do the work. That's, that's <laughs> How like about a that? Good captain would, right? That's right. <laughs> that's anyway, right. she's a delegate. Exactly. <laughs> this is a gym in Oklahoma, this this Forensic Institute at UCO. Well, thank you. And um, thank you very what much. What a great lineup of incredible professors. Many of them are former agents and law enforcement that worked in the field and worked on the bombing. So we right. have a great relationship with them, and it's so fun to have you on the podcast. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, wonderful to be here, and uh, we, we do this in order to be able to um, respect and pay homage to the work that a lot of our faculty did do on that case. Uh, it was very instrumental in a lot of us getting into forensic science and those that are some of our more senior faculty, like you said, we're, we're a part of it. And right. so it's, it's a joy to be continuing to remember um, the work that they did and, and uh, the entire event. Yeah, incredible, incredible police work and um, forensic work was done. And you can follow that at the museum or a lot of different places. But I'm just telling you, these guys are teaching to the next generation. You are not a runner by day. No. I am not. But you're on the relay. <laughs> but I'm on the relay. Uh, that's the joy of having really fast friends. I yeah. guess they get to uh, kind of carry me along. So I'm, They put you on the longest leg oh, or the shortest no, leg? No, 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 no. Shortest leg. Okay, uh, good. Shortest, flattest, like try no hills, three, uh, 5K. Uh, I'm, I'm not setting paces, I'll tell you that much. Well, but you still get to be out there and be part of the team, which I think is, you know, one of the things that people enjoy about the relay. Maybe you're not a distance runner. Maybe you're just getting started and it's a way to be there on Sunday morning um, and, you know, hop out and feel what the race environment feels like and and get to be out on the streets. Yeah, exactly. And I think for your team, you guys are all busy and you don't train together. You're doing your own work. And then that is it. We've got a bit of a, a group chat going where we'll post what our, you know, speeds are and distances are and and you know we'll congratulate people for getting personal bests and things like that but you're right we're not training together our schedules are all over the place from teaching early in the morning to late in the evening and so and then we have families and it's 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 a bunch of different things so we really do it because um we're friends as well and this is a time where we can actually be and, and see each other outside of work which surprisingly doesn't happen near as much as you would you would imagine well i love that and it, it really shows that you guys can, anyone can put a team together. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't have to have these structured right. schedules where you have to all be together. You can all train right. on your own. And yep. you guys are a great example of Allows that. Some flexibility yep. in your training. Yeah. Tell, so, us, tell us what your favorite part of the race is when you're running. Favorite part of the race. Um, I would say the 
uh, joking back and forth via text message, right? Because they're um, the ones setting these ridiculous paces that are super <laughs> fast. And and I get the the razzing of, all right, you know, we're we're, we're this close to where we want to be. Don't let us down. Like, and so having that that push um, is is always kind of fun and, and nice. It's it's really the the hanging out afterwards, crossing the finish line together, uh, seeing all of the family members pass out things. Right. Um, it's it's those those things that I enjoy about the race. Do you always run the same leg? <laughs> yes. Yes. You always take the, yeah. the, the 5K. Um, our team will vary uh, who starts based off of whether or not someone wants to run the half that year. Uh -huh. uh, so that has changed, but I'm I'm not volunteering for a longer distance. No. Yes. No. <laughs> um, no, I, I will not be. So tell us your team name. Uh, Forensic Science Institute. Okay, uh, there you go. It's, it, a bunch of scientists. Very um, basic. It, it is very basic, <laughs> very uh, functional. Functional uh, is a better yeah. word. Um, but the Institute also sponsors us to go oh, there great. and do all of that. And so um, it's nice to bring recognition to what we do. And um, there are other UCO teams as well. And so we'll check on the app and see how close we are. The ROTC boys and girls in that team. They're fast. Uh, they're, they're much they're faster. They're going to win. Yeah. Is there a little friendly competition among the UCO teams? I would say the, the maybe the faculty teams. Like, uh -huh. we'll, we'll, if we've got friends in common, we'll be like, hey, you know. But we were super excited this year. We beat the governor's team. Oh, and good. So we got that T-shirt. and. I don't want to break it to you, but that's not saying a lot. Oh, my <laughs> but I'm glad you did beat him because well, that have, says something, they actually. They have me on the team, so okay. I, it's, it's, it, I'm, I'm But he, I saw him the other night, and he said they're going to be way more competitive this year. Oh, he and said that last year, though, I too, know, I but think. he's really serious, and I put no. Bob Ross in charge of that, that whole division this year, so I think Bob's going to get him charged up and try to get them a little more competitive. All right, now that's gauntlet thrown yeah, down right? yeah <laughs> so you guys do t-shirts or you do we are actually talking matching about, uniforms um, or we, we wear some forensic science institute uh, t-shirts when we go to cross the line but mm. um last year uh, did you see the uh, team that was all dressed like forrest gump yeah okay that was quite inspiring so that wasn't you no okay no, no. and so we're thinking about uh, can we get a costume together and and do all of that. And as great of an idea as it was, um, it would probably be the m most difficult for, for me. I'm like, so they're like sweating. And doing, um, so maybe it was a, a poor decision on my part. Um, <laughs> no, to volunteer for the costume. It's volunteer for costume. It's fun. It's but, fun to see. It's fun to see the teams cross the finish line it's the best together. Part of it. Yeah, they, and it's fun to see the costumes. It's fun to hear the team names. It's fun to hear about the, you know, the little back and forth between teams that are from the same companies or, yeah. you know, that just, it just adds an element of excitement to the, nice. to the race day. Do you have any tips for new relay runners that are out there? Like how you find your teammate or that it gets pretty crazy at those relay stops I hear. Um, the app did help. Um, It'll be better this year. Yeah. I was sitting there <laughs> checking the app and, and, and laughing about it because um, I was waiting for that handoff and my, my teammate was a few miles away. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. And then all of a sudden, he's right on top of me. Right. He's like, go run. <laughs> and so it's like, well, I missed that one completely. Uh, so uh, I think the exchanges are really uh, well done, uh, especially after the pack kind of gets spread out a whole bunch. So by the time I have my leg, it's, mm -hmm. you can see a lot of the, the racers. The organization of the entire event has really done well, being able to announce uh, what team is coming up. So, so that's helpful. Well, that's it good is. to hear. Yeah, that's good it's, to know. It is super helpful. So uh, the first time running it, it was a bit intimidating. and um, But second, third time, it's you know what to expect. And so it's not as nerve-wracking as it was the first time. Well, good to hear. All right. Very well, good. We're so excited yeah, to have you wonderful. guys and appreciate your partnership all year long. We put it together an incredible forensic uh, box for teachers that UCO Forensic Institute helped us develop. And we, we appreciate you, all you guys do and give our best to Caitlin. I, I guess I she's yeah. teaching and you got she, the short straw yeah, today. Yeah, she is teaching today. It's the first uh, day of class. Oh, that's right. Oh, yep. Back to school. Very, class. very, very fun. Well, thank you, Dr. No, Creasy. We appreciate much. it. And we appreciate your partnership and look forward to seeing you at the finish line, Sounds hopefully great. in costume. Yeah, lab coats. I think. Lab, lab coats. coats. Okay, Perfect. okay. Very Sounds good. good. <laughs> thank great. you. Right, thank you. All right, our next guest is not only a longtime runner and family and sports medicine physician with OU Health, he also leads a team of hundreds of medical volunteers Memorial <coughs> Marathon Weekend. Dr. Brian Coleman, welcome back. You have 
You have visited us, I think, every season of the podcast. <laughs> yes, ma'am, have. We are glad to have you back. We're always glad to hear your expertise, your any tips and tricks you have to keep people safe, healthy, and get them to the start line of the race, which should, in theory, get them to the finish line. You bet. And I, I appreciate you calling it expertise. I don't know if that's a, <laughs> just experience maybe, but. So our runners are training in subpar It is temps. cold. Yeah. Any For the tips? last few weeks, it's yeah. been pretty rough. And we um, got a few more coming. Any tips on how to run outside in this weather? Yeah. And it, I think, you know, I've got lots of notes here as far as different things of what to do as far as layer up. When you, when you go out to start, don't be hot when you start. You mm -hmm. want to be comfortable but not hot because five or ten minutes in, you're going to be sweating. And what I've tried to do when I do runs is I give myself seven to ten minutes outside, and then if I'm still brutally uncomfortable, it's time to turn around and change the training plan for the day. Um, but gloves and hats are essential. Keep your ears and your fingers warm. Um, I think those are the main places that I would say to start. Um, again, we're lucky here. I've I tried to read up a little bit and research for you guys. And when you read cold weather running like people in Michigan and Canada. Right. Oh, true. You know, <laughs> oh, I ran in minus 18 and yeah. stuff. Well, thankfully, we don't have to experience that. We right. have yeah. We have wind and things like that. So I usually mention um, like a windbreaker or some sort of top that will cut the wind but then you can take off and wrap around your waist or tie around your waist to finish up your run and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I like to do is run into the wind to start with. Um, well, that's that way brave. You're, I know. You're warming in, warming up into the wind, and then when you're kind of warm and turned around, you can turn around with the wind. Or I design my routes where I'm running across with sure. hopefully some shelter. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're running in Oklahoma, I've said it before. I said it last week. You're, you're going to run in wind. Yes. <laughs> it just is what it is. So other than the cold weather, what other tips do you have? Um, let's talk Let's talk about a couple different things. One, I want to talk about the seniors and what tips mm -hmm. you might have for them specifically in, as they start training. And then for a new runner, if there's things that they should really be aware of as they start this training. We're still in the beginning. We're about, about 15 weeks out mm -hmm. from race day. So people are really starting to ramp up in their training how yeah. do we keep people healthy? Um, well, you mentioned the seniors, and, and I would say thank you. Um, I know you got my sister on here in a little bit, but our mom, last year we signed her up, and she has walked one mile every single day since. That's, That's awesome. She, yeah. she did the 25 and then did the thing, and now she's kept it up for the whole the whole year. That's she's incredible. walked the path around her house inside and everything <laughs> She's wearing else. out the so, carpet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, again, I think that for seniors, you know, whether or not to get a checkup by your physician is probably reasonable, depending mm -hmm. on the medicines you take, other ailments you have, that kind of stuff, just to make sure you're healthy and good to go and things like that. Um, Most doctors are going to like it, probably. So, what's that? Most doctors are going to like the Absolutely. exercise. Absolutely. They're sure. going to, and, and, you know, young, healthy people, if you're not taking medicines, don't have high blood pressure, don't have diabetes, you can start these gradual training plans over 14 to 16 weeks um, and be safe to, to get ramped up to, like you've mentioned, anywhere from a 5K up to the full marathon. Um, again, full marathon, you want to probably have, be able to run 13, 10 to 13 miles at this time before you start a full training plan. Just mm -hmm. It's hard to jump into a full plan that quickly. But almost half and below, you could, you've got time still that you could do a gradual training plan and get ready to do. Sure. When, when you're in your training and you start to feel kind of a little something's funny, when, when is the difference between being sore from a long run and really maybe you are dealing with an injury? That's a good question. I think you and I both, <laughs> yes. we've had this struggle. Um, as, a, as a person that likes to run, when, when you up that mileage and you go, for me it was between 9 and 13, there was a point in there I really struggled um, with, okay, am I sore or is this something that's hurt? Um, and, and I think that it, it becomes, if it's something that you can get up and over the course of 15 to 20 minutes in the morning, kind of walk around, move around, stretch, have your coffee, you know, take a shower. And, and that is kind of 
good to be walking and moving around again, most likely it's um, more of just the soreness, soreness. and the mm-hmm. overuse type stuff. Injury becomes, okay, the next day I try to do that and I try to run again and it just, the, mm-hmm. that's all you can think about is that part or that specific area. It just doesn't get better and doesn't feel better throughout the course of the day. Yeah. Talk to us about hydration. Yeah, and that, that's a tough one because, um, you know, when it's war- uh, freezing like this, everybody wants to drink coffee and get their caffeine, which is, is really good. It's nice to warm you up, but it also can dehydrate you with the caffeine. Um, it's still important, even though we don't feel like we're losing um, with the wind and the cold, you still lose a lot of uh, fluids and can dehydrate really quickly because we tend not to drink nearly as much water um, and that kind of stuff. So it's it's very important to keep hydrated. Um, it's funny, the aid stations um, along the course are cold days. They don't serve as much. Um, uh, they probably should still be really mm-hmm. close, though. Right. Do you need to be drinking more water than typically if you're upping your mileage like this or just just your typical hydration is sufficient? Um, I, I think if you're, again, as, as Mark Bravo that you guys had on, he calls me a healthy sweater. It's a, I, I'm, <laughs> if I work out, it's a thing. And so I have to drink more to, to up mileage and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and have a lot more hydration. Um, so, yeah, I think when you're increasing your plan just on the distance alone, yeah, you want to increase your, your hydration. Again, I think your cold and, and warm weather hydration need to be pretty close as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hydrating in the cold and things like that as well also. And so we talk so much about training when we're talking about races and gearing up for race day. And one thing I think people don't focus on enough is recovery. So can we talk a little bit about recovery and what that looks like? What should people be doing? I've seen a lot of things lately about people like hopping in an ice bath or Mm -hmm. these saunas or are there supplements are those all kind of gimmicky or are those things that are helpful to people right and and i think a lot of that there is not great evidence scientifically based for icing after a run or or doing the sauna before a run or doing those type things to warm up cool down for recovery now in my opinion, if it makes you feel better and it makes you feel like you're recovering quicker, absolutely. So it's just it's personal worth preference. Doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I do think that, you know, especially when you up your distance and things like that, that, yeah, a, a day to kind of rest or recover and not, not try to run 20 miles two or three days in a row. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things why it's a 15-week training plan. It's not right. a one-week training plan to – to go from zero to 20 or 26. Although we always seem to have one or two runners who, who test Absol- us on that. Yep. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and you got your mom signed up again? Yes. She's back she, at it for she year She signed two. up yesterday. She couldn't figure it out, but we, we uh, talked her through for. it yesterday. That's good. Yeah. we got to help our parents. That's right. I know. My parents are both signed up, too. Our it's, kids are going to have to help us. we got to help our yep. parents. This <laughs> is all right. part of the system. It is all part of it. And um, Dr. Coleman, but as we wrap up, I know that part of what you do is getting people to help you volunteer. So yes. can you just really quickly tell us about the you medical bet. volunteers? Yeah, um, on the on the course itself, um, Dr. Sunderland, who I bet will be on the podcast at some point this season, has 18 aid stations, I think, 18 or 19 right. medical stations. And he'll have, hopefully we discussed this yesterday, about four medical professionals at each of those stations. Um, and then in the medical tent at the finish line, we will have upwards of 150 that rotate throughout the day, um, probably about 40 to 50 doctors and then um, different nursing uh, levels and students. And so it'll be, we have a good time as well. Yeah, as a runner, and, I hope you don't have to go in there, but if you do, you're well right. taken care of. I Absolutely. can tell you that. Yeah. yeah, we'll be wandering around through the, the finish line party area and all that kind of stuff this year as well. Watching so. for... Yeah. issues yeah. that people yeah. don't want to admit they that, have that we that we won't have to take care of we're just going to be enjoying the day with everybody right. great well good well, well we're so you. grateful for all your help and yeah. thank you for leading that it's a it's a it's an important cause and uh, we had dr tom he came back out for the training run and i know he he paved the way for you and you, Absolutely. you still have him yeah. come join I, you in the tent I, I still do and i he comes to the tent and i talk to him pretty regularly and and uh, would have been there, but I was out of town last Saturday. I know, but yeah. I think one of the things about that, what it says is, 
these volunteers are incredible and they're committed and you've put together a great team and I just thank you guys and for all the medical volunteers who show up. We couldn't do this race without you. Yeah. Thank well, you very much. Yeah. It takes a lot to keep everybody safe. Thank you. Thanks for always answering yeah. our questions too. I'm sure more oh, will bet. pop up. Anytime. My, <laughs> okay. The guys that were half the misfortune to work with me, they get mad when I'm nerd out about running and <laughs> talking about different things. Well, so we like to I hear about We're it. grateful for it. Thanks, Dr. Coleman. <laughs> Since the first marathon in 2001, OU Health has been a valued partner, serving as co-sponsor of the Marathon's Health and Fitness Expo, the official kickoff of Marathon Weekend. As the original sponsor of the Health and Fitness Expo, OU Health is proud of its enduring partnership with the Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon. We are honored to be a part of this great event. Like OU Health, the Marathon serves to heal and restore while enriching our community. The Memorial Marathon celebrates character, perseverance, and hope. OU Health shares these same values. Congratulations to all of you who have trained so hard and have a great run. All right, Carrie, it's a family affair today. We were joined first by Dr. Coleman, and now we're joined by his sister, Carrie Coleman Norris, who is the Memorial Marathon's volunteer chair. Carrie, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you, Kristen, and thank you, Carrie, for yeah, having me. Yeah, you're sandwiched by Carrie, so good luck on yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, the, it's the Carrie sandwich this morning, so thank you for that. And I, uh, it's always a pleasure for me to follow my big brother. Uh, it's, it's been the story of my life. You get uh, to wrap up the story. I get to wrap up the story. That's right. Did we save the best for last? Uh, what I would say, you probably shouldn't ask our mother that, but I would say absolutely <laughs> you saved the best for last. Well, volunteers are kind of the... the the lifeblood of this race. Absolutely. And you're putting together several thousand volunteers to, to man the course, to man the expo. Tell us what, what you've got ahead of you and what you need. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. So uh, I joined the board, as you know, Carrie, maybe going, this is my third year. Uh, this will be my third marathon to volunteer and to be there on race weekend. Uh, years ago, I participated as a runner uh, in the half and enjoyed that experience. So... Uh, we talked about how important it is both to have medical volunteers, but all the volunteers. Sure. So we were looking the other day. We have a bad, we're looking for a record number of runners, uh, upwards of 20,000. Right. So that means we need upwards a record. Upwards of 23,000. Yeah. So we yep. need a record number of volunteers. <laughs> That's right. So we're looking to fill close to 3,000 spots for volunteers when you think that that's a lot of people on the ground in a three-day weekend uh, to put work together. Um, and we still have, you know, 2,000, 2,400 spots left to fill. Okay, so there's um, a lot. So there's a lot, which means it's it's not a chore task. It's a lot of opportunity. And so we're really looking for uh, new businesses, new companies, new churches, new folks to really get inspired and involved into this community. Of yeah, the race and weekend. all the old ones to come back. Absolutely. So I think one of the challenges is if you run on Sunday, you have the opportunity to volunteer on Saturday. So have we split the races up? The the senior run and the 5K and the kids are all on Saturday. So if you're running on Sunday, get out there and cheer on a different a different age group and go help on, along the course. That's one option. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's a great point, Carrie. You know, we have volunteer opportunities as young as 13 in some areas and as old as you want to be. Uh, and so for those that are participating on Saturday, either in the children's race and their families or the seniors and, quite frankly, their families that come, there's a lot of opportunity to give back, right? Uh, those runners on Saturday have a really great support system from medical to hydration to crowds to, to everything that goes into it. So if you're here and you're in Oklahoma City and you're signed up, uh, we would love for you to stay um, and spend Sunday uh, working anywhere you want to along the course um, we have some specific needs we can talk about, and vice versa if that's true. So if you're signed up and you're running on Sunday, love to have you come down after you go to the expo, pick up your packet. There are volunteer opportunities there at the expo, Friday and Saturday, um, and anywhere out on the course on Saturday. So it's a really exciting opportunity to, to make a whole weekend of it. Saturday's um, a shorter day, so yes, it's, it's, if you're going to volunteer and you're trying to pick, Saturday's a, a good day to do it. It's a great it's a great entry point to volunteering at the marathon. But churches, we, 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 we close several churches with our race course and they're all very gracious and we'll hear from some some of those pastors later on in the season. But 
if you're just a church that has a Sunday school group or something you want to get out and about, this is a great way to have some outreach. Absolutely. Uh, churches, uh, neighborhood associations, if you and your friends, and you don't have to be on the course right. to be an interested neighborhood association. We can take a neighborhood association from anywhere. Um, we've, we've looked at and are focusing on school groups. High school groups, a lot of them have service hour sure. requirements. This is a really great opportunity to come together as a school organization or activity, um, get your required hours in, but also do something really good and maybe be inspired to run in the future or become right. a runner. Um, and the same with university level. Uh, the course, as we just heard from the team, the forensic team at UCO, there's a lot of universities in Oklahoma City that have running groups, student groups, leadership groups, we're really reaching out to them, encouraging them to come um, and get involved because, um, you know, they can do the relay on Saturday and volunteer on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great to see the, the college students get engaged. UCO, those students pack our water stops. I, I should have mentioned that earlier. And they also have a lot of the, the medical trainers on the course. They're, they're getting real world experience with some of these great doctors as they go through the, the school at UCO. And so... There really is not an avenue we can't look at, is what you're saying. Absolutely, absolutely. And we were identifying some critical needs where we need volunteers, and there's some really exciting opportunities for any age or any type of personality. Uh, the starting corral, runner management. So these are the folks that are at the beginning race day. Very um, early. Very early. If you're an early riser, perfect uh, for you. It's perfect for you if you're an early riser. But it's a really exciting opportunity, right? The, the runners are nervous. Right. They're excited. They've worked for months to get ready for this. And you have the opportunity to be there with them. Well, and there's something special about the start line, too. And so getting to experience that yes. is if you're not a runner as a volunteer, you would still... <laughs> get to have right. that full and experience. And it's, it's, a, it's a really mm -hmm. nice VIP way to be behind the scenes at the start line because you can't just get there, right? right. There's not right. a crowd there. Right. It's kind of blocked off. And so we, we need runner or we need volunteers right there at the start uh -huh. to help those runners. You know, Dr. Coleman's talked about training and being ready and you've talked about what does it take to be ready? Well, that morning is as important as the other 16 weeks of training. Absolutely. And so to be those volunteers right there with them uh, it's a really great opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking for volunteers on the green team. So uh, those who, whether it's your school or your church, who has a really strong interest in environmental mm -hmm. issues, you know, this is, this is the recycling team. Yep. And if you think about it, you have 23,000 runners that are drinking yep. and hydrating along the course. There, there's a lot, of, a lot of trash. A lot of trash and a lot of things to recycle. And so the the opportunity to continue to give and do good for the community continues. And so we're looking there for a number of volunteers. And people who volunteer love it. Absolutely. Love it. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And then another area where I, I volunteered my first year is at the finish line, the food and hydration area. So this is when, after all that hard work, the runners come across the finish line and you're able to give them water or Gatorade and snacks and food and give them a first high five and a cheer and a congratulations on a job well done. It's a really fun place to be, mm -hmm. uh, to see those runners come in and accomplish what they've done. So those are just a few of the, the areas where we're looking for volunteers, but there's so much more. How do people find out about the opportunities to volunteer and how do they get signed up? Well, that's a great question. So we are excited this year. There's a, a really easy portal or website. You can go to okcmarathon.com and there's a link on there to volunteer and you just go right through. You can pick by your shift the time that you're available, set Thursday or Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, how long you want to work. Um, and if you have a group, whether it's your church or school or some other group, you can sign up and then you can add the members of your group right there with you at a single sign-on. That's on. great. So, and it's important, right? So you're giving back to the community, but you also get some swag for volunteering. You do. Um, and right now, those that are volunteering, and if you sign up, uh, you can have two free Thunder tickets. Um, and I know you guys are talking good. about yeah. this, and that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, it's an exciting time to be really a part of the Thunder. To Thunder for partnering mm -hmm. with this. Yeah, and it's that. a great partnership. So it's a it's a really wonderful thing to be a part of. I know it's something as a prior runner in a previous life. Um, you know, you don't the runners don't necessarily see all right. that goes into it. Right. Um, but they know it, if it's not there. So. But yes. they would know if it's not there, <laughs> right. and they would know. I know uh, Dr. Creasy was talking about. Um, and on your podcast last week, the, they were talking about how with David Payne, there's never a quiet or silent spot on the course. Um, a lot of that's volunteers that are out there right. at regular spots, and the rest is just the community. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, I would say if you're not able to run 
or if you're not able to volunteer, there's still opportunity to go out there and cheer, cheer. on those runners. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. Carrie, for your work, and we're excited to have your organization and leadership, and we will we will have a great group of volunteers. I know Marathon Weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. It, uh, it, it is inspiring. And if you're a want-to-be runner or you're just starting to run and you're not sure if you can or want to do it, Come out and volunteer. Right. Yeah, it's uh, a great, you're new to Oklahoma it's a, City. Jump in. Right, it's you a great will, way to you catch will be, the marathon You'll back. be inspired, and you'll mm-hmm. aspire to get out on the course the next time. Yeah, that's well, great. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks for all thank you, you do. Guys. And like she said, you can go to okcmarathon.com backslash volunteer to learn more about the volunteer opportunity. You bet. Thanks, Carrie. All right, Carrie. Here we are. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. We want to do something new this week. We want to celebrate some Oklahoma Oklahoma community runners who have gone out and run other races because we know a lot of people use that for their training. Well, Houston was a huge success. They had great weather. I was talking to them this week. Everything went their way. The weather was great. It's a great city. They run an incredible race. We had tons of Oklahoma runners there, land runners, Wahoo. A lot Mm -hmm. of them were there. It was fun to watch the social media and yes. the hype. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun. But a lot of people set PRs. Uh, some of our winners, I think, were down there. I think Al Mater was there. Al Mater was there. He ran the half. Charlie Reichert, who ran on the team of coaches who won the relay last year, ran down there. So they were Mac fun Jensen, to watch. Mac Jensen, who's a great kid, great runner, one of our favorites. And he he's a high school football coach. He ran, had a great race. The Wahoo girls took yes. a huge group. Uh-huh. I had lunch with them the day they were leaving, and just the energy they bring, and oh my gosh, the people they bring along with them in running is yeah. is really magical to watch. I have to say, if you're not in a group, go go find some folks to run with. Um, that's kind of where the magic happens. Yeah, you know, I've been watching the groups a lot over the last couple of weeks, and especially during this cold stretch we're in. And if you want to talk about having some accountability and having some fun in these freezing temperatures they are out 5 a.m running i know, I know. <laughs> and i am telling you you probably wouldn't do that on your own that's so true it is that's a good a good motivator to to find these groups and then just watching the fun they have and the celebrations they have for each other as they go and have success in these well other yeah it's races. great and, and it's I, great for them to go take a, a little bit of oklahoma sure. standard to texas any day yeah. of the week so It was fun to watch. Yeah, a lot of fun. And if you are a runner listening and you're running somewhere, let us know about it. We want to hear about it. We want to celebrate with you. Absolutely. We'll give you a little shout out. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Run to Remember podcast. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any of the programs. We're interested in what you think. Let us know on okcmarathon.com backslash podcast. The Memorial Marathon takes place the weekend of April 26th through the 28th. And if you haven't already, sign up today. This is your host, Kristen Fairs. Let's marathon. Whoa.